In this video, we look at a simplified summary of the story Lost Gold on the Old Spanish Trail by Roman Malik, which appeared in the January 1975 issue of the magazine Treasure. In a recent conversation with a dear Indian confidant, an exhilarating tale was shared, one that would surely captivate the hearts of treasure seekers. This cherished companion resided along the splendid Bill Williams River, nestled at its convergence with the majestic Colorado River in the enchanting realm of Colorado. Many moons ago, a band of intrepid souls ventured into these very lands, driven by an insatiable yearning to unearth a donkey burdened with a fortune in golden splendor, lost amidst the ancient trails of the old Spanish trail. Armed with metal detectors and invaluable map, and written lore to illuminate their path, these courageous explorers enlisted the aid of our venerable Indian ally to navigate this treacherous quest. The tale they unfolded was a tapestry of daring and wonder. In the vast and untamed lands of Colorado, a group of adventurous Spaniards embarked on a perilous quest to seek the fabled seven cities of Chibola. Their daring journey led them to the convergence of the mighty Colorado and Bill Williams Rivers, where they disembarked from their boat. A contingent of intrepid explorers, accompanied by their loyal beasts, ventured forth, following the treacherous path known as the Racing Wash, disappearing into the mist-shrouded mountains. Alas, the elusive seven cities of Chibola evaded their grasp, but fate intervened in the form of a serendipitous discovery. As they traversed the rugged terrain, their weary feet brought them to a bustling mining area aptly named Rawhide. Intrigued by this unexpected turn of events, they decided to halt their search and establish a camp near an Indian village nestled amidst the rolling hills. To their astonishment, the natives boasted an abundant supply of gold, seemingly flowing from the very heart of the earth. The Spaniards, wearied by their fruitless pursuit of the legendary cities, were captivated by the allure of the glittering treasure. They sought to persuade the indigenous people to reveal the secret location of this bountiful source of riches. With the promise of unimaginable wealth, the Indians relented and agreed to guide their newfound companions to the sacred grounds where gold lay hidden. Excitement coursed through the veins of the Spaniards as they embarked on this momentous expedition, fueled by the prospects of untold fortune. The journey through untamed wilderness was arduous, fraught with danger at every turn, yet their determination pushed them forward. At long last, they arrived at the sacred site, a place where nature's alchemy had transformed the earth into a golden paradise. For months they toiled tirelessly, extracting the precious metal from the depths of the earth. Their efforts bore fruit as their coffers swelled with a vast accumulation of gleaming gold. But even the allure of wealth could not quell the longing for home that tugged at their hearts. With their fortunes secured, the time came for the Spaniards to bid farewell to the bountiful lands of Colorado. Laden with their hard-earned treasure, they embarked on a treacherous journey back to the Colorado River, where a boat awaited to carry them homeward. Six sturdy burros, burdened with the weight of their golden spoils, trudged alongside their weary masters, the promise of reunion and prosperity beckoning them forward. As they made their way through the wild landscapes, the echoes of their epic adventure lingered in the crisp mountain air. The tale of the Spaniards who sought the mystical seven cities of Chibola, but found a fortune beyond their wildest dreams would forever be etched in the annals of Colorado's rich history. In the rugged mountains near the flowing river, a tempestuous storm raged, casting its wrath upon the intrepid explorers. The six burrows bearing the weight of their golden cargo trembled in fear, their hearts pounding with trepidation. In the chaos that ensued, a single burrow vanished, disappearing into the mist-shrouded mountains, never to be seen again. Though the trail of the Spaniards led tantalizingly close to the lost burrow and its precious payload, it remained elusive, a mystery hidden amidst the enchanting landscape. Our venerable Indian companion, well versed in the secrets of the old Spanish trail, regaled us with tales of his wanderings. Along this ancient path, he had ventured countless times, traversing the rugged terrain on foot or atop a gallant steed. 
It is upon this very trail, he revealed, that the fateful burrow and its golden treasure had vanished, forever entwined with the tapestry of Colorado's history. But the Indian's tales did not end there. With great excitement, he shared a remarkable discovery he had made deep within the heart of the mountains. A mine, long abandoned by its Spanish prospectors, stood as a testament to their pursuit of wealth. Our companion, an avid photographer, had ventured into the depths of this subterranean labyrinth, capturing the essence of its mysterious chambers. The main tunnel, inclined and winding, led the way into a vast chamber where the air hung heavy with the echoes of bygone eras. Yet, it did not end there. Beyond the chamber, the tunnel descended into an abyss, a yawning shaft of immeasurable depth, its secrets hidden from mortal eyes. Our Indian confidant, fluent in the language of the Spanish conquerors, revealed that this very mine bore the mark of their presence. Spaniards, he informed, were known to be frequent visitors to this land, their wanderings intertwining with the destinies of those who sought fortune amidst the untamed wilderness. As we listened to this enchanting tale, the allure of treasure and adventure filled our hearts. The mountains whispered their secrets, the lost burrow and its golden burden calling out from the depths of time. The legend of the lost mine and the vanished burrow danced in our minds, beckoning us to follow in the footsteps of those who came before, to uncover the mysteries that lay hidden in the heart of Colorado's majestic landscape. Once upon a whimsical time, our dear friends stumbled upon a hidden treasure in the very same spot, a glimmering vein of gold nestled within an outcrop. With a gleeful heart, he chipped away a few precious pieces of ore, each adorned with speckles of shimmering gold, and carried them home. On his patio, where the sun danced upon the wooden beams, he carefully placed the golden ore, its brilliance captivating all who laid eyes upon it. Months passed, and the ore remained a cherished secret, until one fateful day when our friend could contain his excitement no longer. He decided to unveil his golden find to his wise uncle. Curiosity twinkling in his eyes, the uncle inquired, Pray tell, dear nephew, where did these magnificent rocks with veins of gold come from? With a mischievous grin, our friend replied, Not too far from our humble abode, my dear uncle. The very earth beneath our feet holds more of these hidden treasures. The uncle marveled at the rock pieces, their golden allure captivating his imagination. Are there truly more of these rare wonders to be found? He inquired, hope tinged with disbelief. With unwavering confidence, our friend proclaimed, Indeed, dear uncle, the land whispers its secrets to me. It is not I who seeks gold, but gold that seeks me. As if to prove his audacious claim, our friend regaled us with a tale of his recent adventure. In the depths of Mojave Wash, where the restless waters flowed into the enchanting Bill Williams River, he stumbled upon a colossal boulder adorned with precious golden speckles. Nature had chosen to bestow upon him yet another magnificent gift. Bewildered by his friend's unwavering faith in the face of such wealth, one of us dared to ask, why do you not harness the power of these golden sources for your own benefit? With a serene smile, our friend replied, Ah, dear companions, my faith forbids me from disturbing these sacred places. To do so would be to invite chaos and disrupt the delicate harmony of nature's grand design. Once the whispers of gold reach the ears of men, the mountains shall bear the scars of mining, forever altering the tapestry of creation. And so... Our friend continued his humble existence, content in the knowledge that gold would always find its way to him. For in his heart, he held a bond with nature, a bond that transcended gold and embraced the enduring magic of the world around him. In the enchanting land of the Bill Williams area, our dear friend unveiled tales of extraordinary gold sources. Yet he guarded these secrets with unwavering devotion, believing them to be sacred to the Indians. Such hallowed grounds, he insisted, should never be disturbed, and their disclosure should only occur under the assurance of complete protection. I once found myself in a resting place, gazing at an overhanging ledge, our friend revealed, his eyes glimmering with wonder. To my astonishment, I beheld pure silver ore, gleaming in scattered abundance. I cannot bear to witness that majestic mountain ravaged and marred by mining holes. 
As we listened to his tales, our minds danced with fascination. We embarked on a quest to uncover these hidden treasures, diligently following the clues he had generously shared. Yet, he desired no part in their pursuit, urging us to do the same. So be it, we nodded in agreement, respecting his wishes. Our friend then recounted a remarkable encounter from his journey near the Castaneda Wells, miles away from his humble abode in Bill Williams. In his pursuit of wild beehives, he ventured into cavernous depths and gaping crevices. Within one such cavern, he stumbled upon a hidden trove, a cache of mining tools, burrow pack saddles, and daily utensils employed by miners. The air was thick with the echoes of forgotten stories, as if the very walls whispered tales of the past. In the presence of such wonders, our hearts swelled with reverence for the natural world. Our friend's deep connection to the land and his unwavering faith in its sanctity left an indelible mark upon us. For he understood that gold, like the secrets of the earth, will always find its way to those who cherish and respect its eternal beauty. Should you chance upon this hidden trove, our dear friend's voice carried a stern but heartfelt plea. Do not squander its wonders. Preserve these artifacts in a hallowed sanctuary, a museum where they can be admired by all. And remember, credit must be given to the original discoverer, for it is the respect and acknowledgement of history that keeps our stories alive. It is important to note that our Indian friend, though not advanced in years, bears the weight of a delicate heart condition. The great outdoors, once his realm of exploration and adventure, is now forbidden to him. Yet, his home, adorned with relics of his past journeys, stands as a testament to his wanderings. Amongst these treasures, a heap of geodes, some as colossal as a man's head, rests in the yard, a testament to his expedition along the Yuma County side of the Bill Williams River. These geodes, hollow nodules adorned with glistening crystals, hold not only aesthetic value, but also fetch high prices in the realm of rockhound markets. Our friend possesses an abundance of these captivating stones, too precious to be sold or bartered. Their worth lies not in monetary gain, but in the preservation of their untold stories. As our conversation unfolded, it became clear that he possessed a deep obsession, a burning desire to uplift the Indian community, both in terms of their cultural richness and material prosperity. However, he adamantly believed that this progress should never come at the expense of their sacred lands. With fervor in his eyes, he declared, the white men fail to comprehend the profound significance that Indians attribute to the majestic mountains and serene lakes. These natural wonders hold a sacredness that surpasses their mere physicality. As we prepared to bid farewell, our Indian friend imparted one last poignant message, his voice laden with sorrow. Alas, my dear sister's resting place now lies beneath the relentless waters swallowed by the dam's creation. Her spirit finds no solace in this unholy disruption. Editor's Note As the author of this tale, I find it important to disclose my personal connection to the characters and events within. I have spent precious hours conversing with the Indians in question, within the comfort of their own abode. Moreover, I have engaged in heartfelt discussions with other family members, delving into the depths of their shared history. The great-grandfather of the Indian, whose story I now weave, rests eternally in a hallowed cemetery. Situated upon the revered grounds of the Bill Williams River, this sacred site has been duly recognized and registered by the diligent hand of the State Historical Sites Preservation Officer. To my awe, approximately 20 graves grace this consecrated land, one of which cradles the remains of the Indian's venerable great-grandfather, who breathed his last breath at the remarkable age of 97. With my intimate knowledge of the author's character and integrity, as confirmed by the esteemed editor of this magazine, we wholeheartedly embrace this account as a true testament rooted in verifiable facts, rather than mere whispers of hearsay. If you're interested in purchasing a copy of this vintage magazine for yourself, or as a gift for a friend or loved one, please click the link in the description.